Welcome to Whiteboard Friday. I'm back. If you enjoyed Jess over the past couple of weeks and you want to see more of Jess and less of me, that doesn't quite sound right. But if you'd like to see Jess doing more Whiteboard Fridays, just mention that in the comments below and we'll be sure to get her back. Anyway, this week we're looking at Who Leeches Wins? Da, 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 da. It sounds like a game show and it is a little bit. But really what we're talking about is who is allowed to leach pollution into our freshwater rivers and lakes. Lots of communities are struggling with this issue right now, trying to work out how to take this forward. About a year ago, the government created its National Objectives Framework for Freshwater and lots of communities are, are, are wrestling with how to implement this in practice. This is one of the tough issues. Now, the rules of the game are simple. First, we need a community and a catchment where there's some fresh water. And what we're going to do, that community is going to set a limit to the amount of bad stuff that can go into the fresh water, the lake or the river. Once we have that, then we have the game of who leeches wins. How do we decide who is allowed to leach the bad stuff into the fresh water, the river or the lake? Let's take a pretend catchment as an example. And here we have, within this uh, pretend catchment, we have seven farms. One person is farming native timber, not getting a lot of revenue for it, but it's very, very pretty anyway. Uh, there's a pine tree forest, sheep and beef farm, a crop farm, you know, things like wheat and stuff. And then a dairy farm, our good friends, the dairy farmer. This guy is, uh, is, is farming using good practice on good quality uh, you know, good solid uh, dairy soils. We've got a, another dairy farmer who is using good quality practices but is operating on leaky soils where the water passes through quite quickly so there's more leaching going on. And the last one is a dairy farmer who's operating using poor practice so there's a lot of leaching going on there. So let's say within this catchment we have to reduce the amount of leaching going into our rivers by roughly 20%, okay? How do we do this? Who is going to bear the brunt of this cap, this cap on our uh, nitrogen leaching? The first option we have to decide that, let's roll the wheel of fortune, the first option that comes up is an option called grandparenting. What happens under grandparenting is that everyone can carry on pretty much as usual, except they all reduce a little bit, say 20%. Everyone reduces by 20%. A little bit and that way all all the burden gets shared out between them now people kind of like this option because initially it seems quite fair everyone's bearing the brunt a little bit and most importantly our very uh, our people who've invested a lot in their farm their dairy farmers don't have to pay too much despite the fact that they are doing most of the leaching so it's, you know, closest to the status quo, politicians tend to like that quite a lot. The trouble is with grandparenting is that it doesn't rec recognise the, the lost opportunity that these farmers, the pine farmer and the sheep and beef farmer, the native farmer, the crop farmer have. See, they, up until now, they had the opportunity to transform their land, to convert their land to farm dairy, or for the sheep and beef farmer, just to farm more intensively. But this change, this limit on their leaching, means that they have lost that opportunity. And that opportunity, as we can see, is quite big. There's quite a lot of leaching that they could have done, and that's quite a potentially quite a valuable uh, resource for them. So by taking that opportunity away, we have actually robbed them of quite a big potential profit. So grandparenting isn't really that fair in that respect. The other problem with grandparenting is the terrible incentives it sets up. You see, the guy, the, the dairy farmer with poor practice, he is actually allowed to leach more than the guy who is, le who is using good practice. So actually with grandparenting, there's every incentive to get out there and pollute as much as possible as while you can so that when the limits come in, you will have a higher nitrogen cap. That may be one of the reasons why we've seen an awful lot of conversions going on around the country in the past few years, because people knew that water regulation was coming. Already in the Waikato over the last few years, we've seen as much conversions 
as was predicted to, to last right out till 2020. So a kind of a gold rush mentality develops with this grandparenting approach. So we don't think that is a great idea. Another approach is to use good management practice. This basically says that everyone can keep farming how they like, but they have to use good management practice. So that means that the poor manager, the poor dairy farmer down here, really has to get down to the same level as his mate who is using good management practice. So this dairy farmer is bearing most of the brunt of the, of the nitrogen cap within this catchment. Of course, good management practice, while it might be better than grandparenting, still has the problem that these guys are punished because they're losing the opportunity to change their land use. They're losing, ultimately, their land values are gonna get impacted by that change in opportunity. So it's not so great either. Another approach is, used, is by using the natural capital approach. And this approach says that every land use, every bit of land should be used for the, the best possible uh, function, the best possible farming approach. And that would really hammer this dairy farmer that's operating on the leaky soil. It would say that he actually has to get down to about the same level as the sheep and beef farmer because these guys are both farming on poorer quality soils. So ultimately, they should be leaching about the same amount. This shouldn't be a dairy farm at all. It should probably be a sheep and beef farm. So that, that's what the, the natural capital approach does. It really hammers that, that dairy farmer operating on the leaky soil. But again, uh, is that fair? That, that dairy farmer has invested just as much in their farm as all the other dairy farmers. So should they be, should they be hammered more than the others? Perhaps. Uh, they certainly, did they, did they know about what kind of farm that they were buying when they set off? Did they know about the quality of the soil? All these sorts of interesting questions. The last approach is just to allow everyone in the catchment to leach the same amount per hectare as everyone else. So we draw a line across everyone and we say per hectare you're allowed to leach that amount. So again, all the dairy farmers will take a big hit. But the good news is that those dairy farmers might be able to purchase some of the nitrogen leaching off these guys who are doing less than, they, they, uh, less than the total cap allows them to do. So you might see some money flowing from the dairy farmers to the other land use types. Now this one is particularly fair because it acknowledges that these other farms are giving up the right to convert their land to dairy and they're compensating them for that lost opportunity. So the, the bottom line is, unlike most game shows, in this one, no one really wins. Because when you, when you put a, a total cap on leaching within, within a catchment, someone is always going to get hurt. Someone's always going to have to bear the brunt of the change. The question is, what's the most fairest and most efficient way of bearing that brunt. We think it's allowing everyone to have an, an equal allocation across the catchment and allowing them to trade, but you might disagree. Comment below.